हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर महेश मोहिते अ पीडियाट्रिशियन एंड पीडियाट्रिक इंटेंसिविस्ट फ्रॉम रायगढ़ महाराष्ट्र आई एम गोइंग टू प्रेजेंट द नेक्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ अवर पॉपुलर स्टीयर सीरीज व्हिच इज कंसेप्चुअलाइज्ड एंड गाइडेड बाय आवर बिलवेड टीचर डॉक्टर वाईके आंबेडकर सर टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टेल यू अबाउट अर्ली क्लिनिकल डायग्नोसिस ऑफ अ नॉन इन्फेक्टिव कफ एज यू ऑल नो the cuff is a manifestation of airway disease this is by virtue of cuff receptors being concentrated or being present in the area of the respiratory tract beginning right from nasopharynx to oropharynx to larynx to trachea and till major bifurcation almost up to next about 7 to 10 generations of the airways obviously the concentration of these receptors is maximum in the middle part so you will have more cup presentation in case of any laryngeal tracheal or proximal airway pathology and as you go periphery on either side the cup will be lesser as a presentation the fever is a manifestation of infection especially the high grade fever so if the cup is with high grade fever or significant fever then likely it is an infective cup and if it is with very low grade fever which you see in few of the inflammatory condition or there is no fever with a cough then it is very likely a non infective cough when the cough the cough can be with or without expectoration the expectoration tells you probably some stagnated secretions which you would see in case of infective cough it also may be seen in case of some airway defense problems so like some kind of a primary ciliary dyskinesia or some stagnant kind of a loculated anatomical abnormality or something which is pathology in the airway something like bronchi bronchiectasis where you may have a wet cough otherwise the cough coming out of just irritation or airway compression which will be generally a dry cough when we talk about cough analysis without fever we first go into probable durations so it can be a pattern of acute cough or a chronic cough or could be a recurrent cough by virtue of acute cough i mean to say cough up to 3 weeks which is a common feature of most of the viral infections and post viral cough where cough can extend as long as almost 3 weeks when it goes beyond that duration then we label it as chronic cough and based on the age of onset there could be various pathologies if it is in the early age group we may think of some kind of anatomical abnormality in the airway or it could be a stagnant process as in case of in later age group it could be like bronchiectasis or similar things uh, it also can be because of airway compression or kind of a chronic air allergy exposures where the cough may go beyond 3 weeks uh, labeling it as chronic cough a recurrent cough which can be one kind of an episode which can be just kind of a recurrency with intermittent absolute abnormal or kind of absolute normal period which you may see in allergic disorders like asthma or uh, even at times with allergic rhinitis and this kind of things though rhinitis predominant symptom will be nasal congestion and nasal discharge but asthma is a classical condition in which one would see a recurrent cough that means sudden exacerbation recovery and intermittent period of absolutely normalcy but there can be a manifestation of recurrent cough as acute on chronic so underlying low grade features of abnormality will continue with intermittent exacerbation which may be seen in some anatomical abnormalities in the airway or it could be in cases of breach in the defense mechanism of uh, uh, kind of airway secretion removal like a primary ciliary dyskinesia or immunodeficiencies or cf or similar kind of a condition certain point need to be considered here as per the age of onset one which occurs in the early infancy is commonly probably airway abnormalities very commonly some aspiration syndromes in a toddler age group it could be walry or hyperreactive airway disease in later age group it could be hyperreactive airway disease or asthma or chronic airway pathologies which need to be considered the character of cough also gives you some kind of a hint towards likely primary pathology a dry cough can be irritation as in case of asthma or hyperreactive airway disease a brassy cough could be a manifestation of tracheal irritation a hollow <coughs> <coughs> that kind of a cough a wet cough 
which is a manifestation of collection of secretion which we would commonly see in case of infective condition or mucociliary dysfunctions. Staccato cuff typically is a presentation of atypical infections or some mucus secretions which are stagnant in the airways. Whooping cuff typically uh, we would commonly see in early infancy or toddler's age group but at times even in the later age group as well a hallmark of a whooping uh, pertussis or a pertussis like infection. The timing, diurnal variation of the cuff. So early night when the child goes to sleep, the early kind of a cuff which is commonly because of post nasal discharge manifesting, manifested in cases of maybe sinusitis or kind of a uh, paranasal infections. The cuff coming after maybe one or two hours of cuff with a choking episode can be a gastroesophageal reflux disease cuff because of the regurgitation and aspiration and early morning cuff can be because of hyperreactive airway disease, allergic disorders or asthma. There are some cuff associations also need to be taken into consideration. So cuff with a stider points you towards the upper airway pathology, usually extra thoracic upper airway. Cuff with V's tells you a small airway pathology, the exhalation pathology. Biphasic stider or V's can be a manifestation of a tracheal or kind of a carinal pathology, obstructive or irritating pathology. A grunt with a cuff tells you probably it's a alveolar pathology. Chest pain with cuff can be arising from a pleural pathology. As I said, the receptors can be in the pleura, can be in the diaphragm and occasionally also in the ear drum. So one with a symptomatic hypoxia, cuff coming with symptomatic or at times asymptomatic hypoxia can be a manifestation of an interstitial lung disease. The cuff also you need to take into consideration in chronic cuff, the exposures to allergens and classically being the seasonal cuff coming after pollen exposure or a dust the specifically the house dust house mite those exposures or so at times rarely some food exposures some farm pollens and smoke dust kind of a road dust or kind of a you know those kind of odd exposures or some chemical factory nearby your house they also can give rise to cuff which can be a chronic in nature past history of allergy asthma atopy in the child as well as in the family members, the parents especially can hint towards again the allergic cough as a likely pathology. Family history of atopy and, uh, and allergy also need to be taken. In that particular child, any early markers of atopy in the early age, maybe it could be infantile eczema or cyborrhea or uh, chronic uh, kind of a nasal discharges also need to be taken into consideration when you are analyzing chronic cough in a given child. There are certain hints towards probable severity of the cuff. So when the cuff is associated with apnea, especially we would see this in an infantile age group that can be a life-threatening event and this child essentially indicate there is some serious pathology underneath and need to be hospitalized for observation. It could be cuff syncope occasionally. So child gets up in the morning, goes to the urinal and, and he just get, I mean, uh, he, he gets up in the morning and starts coughing badly and gets choked and get develops syncope. So cuff syncope is a known phenomenon again hinting towards probably severe pathology during this cup probably intrathoracic pressures go very high and a child may have low outputs kind of situation and developing syncope it could be cuff followed by choking classically which we see in case of gastroesophageal reflux disease or at times it can be cuff coming suddenly with a choking in an infant which can be a marker of foreign body aspiration so those kind of history need to be taken as per as severity is concerned there are certain associations with cuff which will hint towards likely pathology. So cuff coming with exertional dyspnea or kind of a, uh, fatigue can be a marker of cardiac uh, pathology. Cuff with vomiting can be marker of aspiration syndromes. Cuff with ear infections or ear wax can be irritation of the eardrum where again there are few cuffs receptors situated. Cuff with abdominal pain can be a marker of a lower segmental, basal segmental pathology in the lung which can give rise to an abdominal pain and cuff. A clinical pointers of association. So preceding choking episode in a toddler is probably of a foreign body though it's not always hardly about 40% of the classical foreign bodies may be coming with a choking episode. But when you have this kind of episode on the setting, on the background setting, then definitely think of a foreign body. Failure to thrive in, in with a cuff can be a marker of chronic lung pathology like interstitial lung disease or similar things. Clubbing 
in a cuffing child is a marker again of a chronic pathology which is giving rise to hypoxia classically can be again because of bronchiectasis, suppurative lung disease or occasional interstitial lung disease. Then chest deformity along with a chronic cuff again can be a marker of airway pathology or chronic lung pathology. You may get pectus excavatum, pectus carinatum. They also can be manifesting in a chronic lung pathology, especially the airway pathology. So friends, to summarize, while analyzing non-infective cuff, you look at the duration of the cuff. Longer the duration, more critical the pathology, more aggressively you should be looking for the underlying pathology. Age of onset, the infantile age group, the early toddler age group and the late age group. The infantile could be a congenital anomaly, toddler can be vulnerable or hyperreactive, late onset can be asthma or similar pathologies. History of allergen exposure is very important for the whole family. Past and family history of allergy is important for any kind of atopy. Diurnal time of variation, so early night could be a post nasal discharge, then within first two to three hours it could be uh, HRA could be a uh, aspiration syndrome, the GERD, or early morning and morning cuff, and then day, day, daily intermittent cuff can be a marker of asthma. Character of cuff, whether it is dry cuff, weight cuff, staccato cuff, brassy cuff, whooping cuff, they can give specific hints. Severity of cuff, cuff associated with hypoxia, syncope can be a very categorically very serious ones and need to be observed and evaluated thoroughly. Associated mechanics. So one with a strider, one with a wheeze, one with a grunt, one with a chest pain, one with abdominal pain. Know the associations so that you can have a good pointer towards the underlying pathology. And don't to forget the systemic effects of the underlying pathology also need to be looked after. So if there is a lethargy, if there is kind of a hypoxia, desaturations, clubbing, short stature, chronic growth failure, on the background of cuff, you need to have a more serious look at it, a functional lung analysis need to be done in those kind of conditions to have a complete pathology. So that's all about the cuff without fever. Thank you very much.